If you have an old pair of sneakers, instead of throwing them out, you could save them from the landfill. Here to talk about how you can save shoes from the landfill is Mary Ellen Ford. Welcome to the show. Thank you. How did this idea come about? Well, it really boils down to a single pair of shoes I had sitting mm -hmm. in my shed for the last two years um, since we moved to Kenwick. Mm -hmm. And my daughter had grown out of them. They were too big for me and they were still in pretty good shape. So it didn't feel right to throw them out, but I didn't exactly know what to do with them. Mm -hmm. So a few weeks ago, I was thinking back to when I did mud runs and okay. after the race was over, people would chuck their muddy shoes into a big pile mm -hmm. and the race organizers would dry them out and then they would donate them to people who needed the shoes. So okay. I was, yeah, I was, I was convinced there had to be something like that right. without having to do a mud race. You know, <laughs> right. You know. right, you didn't have to get your shoes right. all muddy before Ex doing that. Yes. Exactly. So after a cursory research on the internet, I found gotsneakers.com. Okay. And they're a zero waste uh, sneaker recycling company. Mm -hmm. And so I um, was pretty excited. I just went ahead and researched it a little bit and filled out the form, requested one bag. I had one pair of shoes. Uh -huh. When I got the bag and opened it up, it was as tall as a first or second grader. So I was like, uh, I'm going to need more shoes. I'm going to need more shoes. <laughs> <laughs> so that was when I did the post on Facebook uh -huh. to our Kenwick neighborhood page. And okay. they've just been so generous. And family, friends, and neighbors have, have helped me fill up that bag as well as another bag, so I've had to since request more bags to, to fill them up. So how many shoes has it been so far? I have four dozen shoes that I've been wow. able to donate so far, so I'm pretty excited. It definitely went beyond the single pair that was sitting out in my shed, so it's pretty exciting. I really like that, and because a lot of us have, I mean, tennis shoes, or just shoes that you've worn out that, yeah. what do you do? You throw them away and then you never see them again. That's right. And now you can be giving them a good home. That's right, there's another option out there. And it's really, it's kind of an example of the, of the circular economy. Mm -hmm. So what I mean by that, the paradigm is an item is manufactured, we purchase, we use, and then typically we discard, but we can bypass that mm -hmm. where an item can be either upcycled or it can be reused mm -hmm. in, by someone else. So I think that's really exciting. So it goes beyond the sneaker. There's clothes, there's books, mm -hmm. there's lots of items that kind of go through that process. So I just love all the innovative companies out there that are kind of providing that it's kind of bypassing the, the trash can option. And I know you told me too, there's a book that you read that stuck with you. That was mm -hmm. another piece of this. Yeah, and it's called The Story of Stuff by Annie Leonard. Uh -huh. And I read it several years ago. Um, it was probably a recommendation by my little brother. He's always a good source of, of thought-provoking titles. So mm -hmm. um, it's all about the uh, impact of overconsumption mm -hmm. on our planet, our communities, and our health. And so it really has um, kind of shifted my mindset from, you know, thinking about out of sight, out of mind into the trash can to what happens when you put something in there. So, right. I, you know, more, more times than not, I'm trying to consider the trash can as a last resort as opposed mm. to the first option. So. And if folks are compelled and want to save their sneakers from the landfill, how can they do that? Well, there's a couple ways. So okay. the first way, you're welcome to bring them to my house, which is <laughs> in the middle of this 200 block of Bassett Avenue in Kenwick. Okay. So I do have a box sitting on my front porch. It's a mm -hmm. covered porch. I have a beagle that is supervising, supervising like this that. operation. I like that, supervising, making sure the shoes are all <laughs> yeah. there. Yeah. If, you, if you hear her howling at the door, she's just saying thank you. <laughs> um, so yeah, so that's one option. And mm -hmm. then the other option is you can do what I'm doing and you okay. can, I would encourage people to go to the website and um, sponsor your own sneaker drive. It's really okay. easy, there's no cost. They provide prepaid shipping labels on the bags, so mm -hmm. there's really no cost to do this. It's pretty fun. I like it. And do you have a goal now? I know it's already <laughs> blown up, so yeah. do you have a goal of what you, you want to accomplish, or is just the more the merrier? It's, it's all gravy at this point, <laughs> so I'm just excited. Again, I filled up that one bag, so from mm -hmm. now on, it's just all gravy, so it's pre right. pretty great. Well, so cool. Thank you so much, Mary Ellen, for coming in and talking about this project. I hope folks can help donate their shoes that they're going to gonna throw out or about to throw out. I do too. Thank you so much for having me. <laughs> Stay with us. We'll be right back after this.